I'm uh, Casey Hudson. I'm the executive producer for Mass Effect. All right, well, we're showing off a pack called Overlord, and it's really the biggest uh, downloadable content pack that we've done for Mass Effect 2. Um, I think we're showing people that uh, we have a real commitment to ongoing DLC, um, so it's not just uh, you know weapons and items and stuff like that, but we're doing some real story stuff, and that's what we're doing with Overlord. It's about uh, two to two and a half hours of gameplay. Um, it's a standalone story, so you can play it from the middle of Mass Effect 2, or or if you finished it. Um, and it's a really cool story. It's about a, a Cerberus scientist who has kind of experimented on his brother uh, to see if he can get him to communicate with the Geth and learn more about them. Um, but uh, big surprise, the experiment gets out of hand. And now this AI is powerful enough that it's trying to escape the planet. And you, as Commander Shepard, are trying to keep it locked on this planet, going around to different outposts, and, and uh, you're really trying to find this AI and destroy it. What we're trying to do is we're kind of transitioning from the assumption that uh, people are still in the middle of playing Mass Effect 2. Um, you know, when we release a game, uh, a pack like Kasumi, um, a new character, uh, a bit of a mission, um, and we're kind of assuming that people are going to take that character and then do another playthrough of Mass Effect 2. Um, at this point, lots of people are still playing Mass Effect 2. A lot of people have finished it. So that's why we're doing a uh, very much standalone story. Um, and then we'll kind of continue that trend and start transitioning into assuming that everybody has finished Mass Effect 2. And then we're going to start telling the story between Mass Effect 2 and 3. There was a reason why we didn't develop the character, uh, the kind of relationship aspect of the new characters as much as the main characters. And uh, again, that's, that is actually part of the, the fact that we know people are getting them after the main game. Um, and so they may have actually finished Mass Effect 2 already. Um, and so the degree to which they are going to develop that relationship is probably less than what they want from that character in terms of uh, combat and changing the way that the ending works out and who lives and dies and those kinds of things. So that's where we put the emphasis. Uh, now that we've got the full complement of 12 characters, if you have your base 10, uh, you get Zaid through Cerberus and then Kasumi, you got your 12 characters and so now you can have your full lineup. Um, now we can actually start building out the actual story experience. Um, so that's what we're doing with Overlord, standalone experience, and then future downloadable packs, which we're actually working on right now, will continue to actually tell uh, not just the ongoing story between Mass Effect 2 and 3, but also just uh, really fleshing out the universe in some really fun ways that I think people have been asking about, including uh, developing some of the characters that uh, you may be familiar with in the Mass Effect universe. In the uh, Firewalker pack, um, being a free pack, there was a substantial amount of content there, uh, especially given that it was a free pack. And it was also a way for us to start working back uh, towards having the vehicle as part of the, the fundamental experience for the Mass Effect missions. Um, and so with Firewalker, we introduced this vehicle. Uh, we got some feedback on it. It was generally really well received. Um, and so now with Overlord, the vehicle is back, um, it, and it's, it's still the hammerhead from the Firewalker pack. But now we are able to introduce it in a really fundamental way. So it's actually the way that you get around this planet from one outpost to the other. Um, and so it's kind of part of the, the world map for the Overload, Overlord DLC. But it's also um, something that we're doing further experiments with in terms of, uh, you know, there's actual platforming levels with the vehicle. Uh, it becomes, you know, a pretty integral part of uh, some of the bigger boss fights. Um, so we're doing things with the vehicle and some of the other gameplay and puzzles as well that uh, are kind of a way for us to not only experiment and, and have fun developing it, but also to give players a new experience because we know that they're, they're actually paying for something s separate from the main game. So we want to give them experience that's uh, really unique and I think that's what they'll get with, with Overlord. Absolutely. What we're trying to do with uh, Overlord in terms of its, its uh, vehicle experience is, like I say, kind of working back to what people liked about the uh, Mako missions in the first game. Um, we knew what people didn't like were some aspects of the, the vehicle, the way it maneuvered and things like that. 
that's addressed with the new vehicle that we have. Um, people did like the idea of these bigger worlds that kind of made it feel like you're in, in kind of a larger galaxy. Um, and so we're trying to get back to that. And that's kind of what we're experimenting with in Overlord. You got a new vehicle. It, it's really maneuverable, really fun to drive. But we, you also have an incredibly rich environment. It's a beautiful environment with uh, creatures and, and uh, you know, there's uh, grass, there's trees and rocks and all these things that make it a very lush environment. But it's also a huge location and it has all kinds of caves and things to explore. So these are the kinds of things that um, it's kind of across the board addressing what people liked about those missions from Mass Effect 1, but also all the things that they wanted to see improved. We're trying that in Overlord, and then based on what we learned from that, then we can build those things into the next game. Yeah, he was a pain. I think the DLC is a great way for us to, um, you know, kind of develop our, you know, our, our, our plan for what we want to do next um, in terms of, I mean, people will see in, in our DLC that uh, the graphics look better and, and just the, the entire experience seems better somehow. And that's because we're able to learn from what we did on Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 was a huge improvement over the, the first one. Um, but having done that, we have a whole bunch of new tricks up our sleeve. And uh, so that's what you start seeing in the DLC. And, and so that's why those end up being even better than the main game. Um, but it's also a way for people to uh, kind of explore stories that you wouldn't otherwise do. So we can kind of pick a, a really fun part of the fiction or a fun part of the larger story and explore that a little bit in a really fun way. Well, the, the mining game, I think the issue was that, first of all, we put more emphasis on it than, than we needed to because it was kind of uh, important to your progression. Um, but also, I think people ended up uh, it, spending more time with it than they needed to. Um, there are people who literally tried to mine the galaxy, the entire galaxy, and we didn't expect that, frankly. You know, um, So we've learned a lot from that, um, but we still want a way to kind of have you discover new planets find new locations on them. Um, and so that will continue to be a part of the experience. But we'll always learn um, from, from previous games and apply what we learn. You never, you never can create perfection. You know, um, we're, we're extremely happy with what we did with Mass Effect 2. Um, it's you know, tied for second highest Metacritic of all time. So you know, we, we certainly can't be disappointed with that. Um, but in every, every aspect of it, we're, we're always seeking perfection and that's why we listen to feedback I mean you know there's 150 people that work on the game but there are millions and millions of people who play it and have opinions about how they think we should be doing it and we always look at that feedback and that becomes a big part of how we build the next one so I uh, I can go uh, Overlord will be for uh, 560 Xbox points and uh, you know seven dollars um, it'll come out in June, um, and it'll be on Xbox and PC. Joker, lose this channel.